Hello, 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 ladies. So I was asking if you guys needed some extra support and the theme of lack came up in the group. So I thought I'd jump on and we'd go through some of the things around lack that we need to have a look at and why it turns up and all of those things, right? So the first thing that I wanna say about lack is we all have it, right? None of us are immune. It creeps in from time to time. And if you don't know what I mean by lack, um, it's where we think that we're without, right? So if, if you feel that you lack abundance, so you may think in the forms of cash or money, that you don't have enough, you never have enough, or you have just enough. These are all limiting beliefs and lack beliefs around money. So lack itself can actually be more than just money, but a lot of the times it is very, very much related to money. It can also come so that some of those limiting beliefs around lack can also come from our self-worth, which is a whole different can of worms. So what we want to talk about today, and I've got a couple of notes here, is you don't have to go back to the beginning and start from scratch. So a lot of people, when they talk to you about working on your money stories or your money beliefs or, or the lack that shows up in your life, a lot of them go, well, you have to go back to the beginning and think of every goddamn story that you've ever come up with in your head like that one time at band camp when mum made you take a packed lunch and you weren't allowed to buy one or whatever it was, right? They make you go back and relive all of them. And now I've paid a lot of money to some of these people. And what I found is that when they take you through that process, it's extremely traumatic. And if you had already done a shit ton of work to get yourself to a much better space before you even go doing their course... When you start to do their course and they go, oh, go all the way back to the beginning, think of every story you can think about, right? You Then all that work that you've done prior to starting their course gets undone. So I actually don't teach it that way. The best thing that I can say to you is that become more aware of your thoughts. Now, um, some of you think that you know, you have a lack mindset and you think it's there all the time, but I can promise you it's not because there's those glimmers of moments where you're actually really happy and joyful and you're not thinking about it. And in those moments, you're actually not in a space of lack. So when you think that you're in it all the time, you're really not. Lack comes from the thoughts that come into your mind. So when you start to bring awareness to them, so for example, I had a client once who was very, very much in a lack headspace. And what we did for her was instead of going back to the beginning, like I said before, I don't teach it that way. Instead of going back to the beginning, what she did was she just became super aware of her thoughts. And as a thought would pop into her head, so for example, one of the thoughts that would come up for her is, I'm not going to get a cooked lunch at work because that costs more right? I would just get the shitty sandwich that I don't like because it was cheaper. So when she started to really notice the stories that were coming up in her head, one day she actually turned around and go, you know, no, I'm actually going to get that cooked lunch because that's what I really want. And that's what I feel like. And that shifted her out of lack in that moment because she then felt abundant enough to be able to get the cooked lunch. And I know it's the simplest of things, but these are the things that matter, right? So if you go through your day and if you become super aware of your thoughts and you start to recognize that thoughts pop up in your mind of like, oh, I never have enough money, then in that moment when you get that thought that you never have enough money, the whole point of that then is if you can't specifically snap yourself straight out of that, then you need to find three moments when you had enough money. And it could have been, I had enough money to pay for bus fare. I had enough money to pay my phone bill. I had enough money to pay the electricity bill. 
because those are breaking that belief. You're finding proof that breaks that belief. And when you can break that belief and that reoccurring pattern that you keep telling yourself that you never have enough money, you'll actually find more evidence that you do have enough money. It's just that you don't have the amount you want. And that's a different ball game, right? So what we need to do when it comes to lack is, so the biggest tip is become super aware of your thoughts. When you find that those thoughts start to creep in, like I said, they're not there all the time. It's impossible almost for them to be there because we have moments with our kids that make us smile and laugh and we forget about it. So when they creep in, what you would do in an instant is find three things that disprove that belief, right? So I never have enough money. I'm going to go, right, that's come into my head. Hold on a second. I had enough money to pay the mortgage. I had enough money to pay my rent. I had enough money to put petrol in my car. I had enough money to pay my phone bill. Um, I may not know where the next lot of money is coming from, but I had enough to do those things, right? And even if it means I had enough to pay for my coffee this morning, it doesn't matter. The idea is that when you find the evidence and the proof that disproves that belief, you can start to break that pattern. And if you continually do it in it all the time, every time that comes up, you'll start to shift it a lot quicker. So that's one thing that I would recommend. Um, the other thing that you could do is if you find that shifting that pattern is a little bit hard for you. Um, and not a lot of coaches would recommend this, but this is something that I do. And this this kind of touches on the incremental improvements that we talk about in manifesting as well. So say for example, our money story is never enough, right? So we try and break that pattern. Now let's replace it with just enough, right? So. Just enough still isn't the best limiting belief to have, but it's better than never enough, right? And if you ever watch Esther Hicks, she always says that there's a line of emotions and it's the same for limiting beliefs. There's always one higher that you can reach for. And if you reach for the next one higher, then you reach for the next one higher next time, right? So you just keep shifting them. So as you go through, so we go from never enough and we reach for just enough, right? Because that, that gap isn't very big and it should be a lot easier for us to re rewire from never enough to just enough because it's only really one word change, right? And if we keep doing that pattern change where we find the things to disprove the initial belief, we can change it to the next one. And then when we get to the next one, we find evidence to disprove it again and move to the next one. And this way we can do it in small increments and it doesn't come as such a huge shock to us, but we're always progressing forward, all right? So these are some of the quick tips that I wanted to give to you. So don't start at the beginning. You don't have to because trust me, they will all come up um, and you just deal with them as they come up, right? So deal with those limiting beliefs and those moments and you know, you can also go through that trigger process that I've, I've shared in the group a couple of times. You know, if it comes up for you and it starts to trigger something for you, you know, like some of the experiences one of you are having, um, you can go back and go, okay, what do I need to learn from this? What do I need to do to let it go? How do I shift away from this now? And start going into that meditative process to ask yourself those questions so that you can get yourself out of there. All right. Another really good way to do, and I might do this in a separate live, but we might be able to do a group timeline therapy where we actually go back and pull those moments out and we remove the effect that they have on our lives and we can go back through generations. So I'm thinking that we might actually do that. I'm going to set up a event for us to do that and I'll do it in a Facebook live because it's much easier. And we can go through and do that process and pull out those moments in our history, both in this life and the past, and actually let them go for once and for all. Remove the vows that we have taken in past lives. Remove any of the ancestral stuff that's keeping us back and just let it all go 
and step forward into the new us that's free, abundant, healthy, and wealthy, right? So, and completely loved and accepted because that's who we are. We truly are. So those are my tips for moving away from lack. If you do have any other questions, please comment below and let me know. And I will find a time for us to do that live. All right. Let me know if this helped. I always love your feedback. Have a great day, guys. Bye.